Today we'll be making a custom modifier, one that will act like an array modifier, but in a radial sense rather than just going off into one direction for infinity. We'll have influence over the scale of the object, the amount of objects that the array creates, the distance from the pivot point, and whether or not the object will face towards the pivot point or just duplicate the original orientation. As you can see, it works fine without a pivot point, but if you want them to surround a certain object, let's say a UV sphere, the pivot point can be used to select that sphere. And then when you move the sphere around like this, you can see the objects follow it around. It's not quite parenting because if I rotate this, it doesn't rotate around with them. You have to individually rotate the array itself. Of course, if you prefer, you could just parent it to any object. Anyway, let's get into making this. For this, we're going to be using geometry nodes. So we'll go into the geometry node workspace and just make a new geometry nodes tree. And we'll call it radial array. If you just want this project file to take this modifier and run with it, do your own thing with it, or just to compare to your own system, there will be a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download it. Anyway, let's start with the parameters. We're going to go into our group here and we're going to add some inputs. So first and foremost, we're going to add the pivot, which is going to be a object. So we can select an object. We'll also need a float value for the scale. Then we also want a integer for the count, another float value for the distance. And then we lastly want a bool variable. Here we go, boolean for the face pivot. As far as I know, starting in Blender 3.5, this should be a checkbox. For now, bools work as just an integer that can only be zero or one. Slightly annoying how that works, but soon that should be fixed. First things first, we're going to come off this pivot here and we want to get that object info because we're going to be using the location data from that object. If you wanted to, you could also use the rotation and scale data and effectively make a parent-child relation that way. And then next, we'll add a curve circle and we will set this to being points. Why points? Because with points, we can actually influence where these three points land based on the object's info. First though, let's come off this curve and add a curve to points. That way we actually create some points where we can instance the mesh that we want to duplicate. So of course, coming off that, we're going to say instance on points and our original geometry is going to go into what we're going to instance. So now we can already see that if we look around, we can change this count. And that's effectively kind of already the functionality that this modifier will have. We just need to give some control to the user at this point. So for that, we're going to first and foremost come off this location and we'll get some vector math done. So we'll do that three different times. So one, a second one and a third one. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this point 0.1, point 0.2 and point 0.3 to the original values coming off this object info uh, based on our distance. So we'll get our distance and put that into a combine XYZ and we'll do that three different times. So the top one is going to have to be negative distance for the X. The middle one is just the distance value for the Y and the third point is going to be the distance value for the X again. So we can plug the distance value into Y and into X. And then for the first one, we actually have to go through a multiply node first with a multiplication of negative one to make it a negative number. And then we can add those all together with the vector math nodes and put them into these points for the curve circle. And now we can see our distance parameter works fantastically. Obviously the count parameter is just gonna go into the count from the curves to points and that will automatically space things out equally over the circle. So there's no math needed for that at all. So let's 
clean this up a little bit and pull these a little more out of the way because we're going to need to add a couple more nodes after the curves two points but before the instance on points we're actually going to pull off this rotation into a rotate euler we'll set that to axis angle and local the angle will be set to 90 degrees and the axes will be x equals 1 and the other two equal 0. That's to rotate it around its local x 90 degrees because otherwise the objects will start to lay on the sides. So that's just a little bit of correction. And that we can then just put into the rotation and we'll see now everything is facing the pivot point itself. In order to make this so that it will either face the pivot point when we say it should or not face the pivot point when we say it shouldn't, it's as simple as pulling off this face pivot and multiply with vector math because it's effectively just a zero or a one. So if we just run it through that first before putting it into the rotation, now when face pivot is set to zero, it doesn't face the pivot. When it's set to one, they will be facing the pivot. And just as easily as that, we have the entire custom made modifier that you saw in the beginning of the video. Works like a charm. You can rotate it around as a entire object. Not a problem. And last, but certainly not least, we want to connect up the scale to this scale over here. So we can scale this up as big and as small as we'd like. And don't forget to set the default to being one for the scale and for the distance. And the count to something like three, for instance. Otherwise, you might forget how this works, and then when you apply the modifier, it'll just be confusing. Same thing with the minimum amount here. Probably should be zero. Same for scale, and also for distance. And of course, if you want it for slightly different purposes, you can add some more things to this, if you would like to. To give you some inspiration, as an example, what you could do is you could add another rotate Euler here, and set the axis to being z equals one and the others equal zero and now what we have is a little handle that can just rotate all of them around their own axis like this that's not part of the tutorial though that's just a little bit of inspiration for you guys to maybe experiment with this a little bit more if you have this entire system set up now i'll clean this up a little bit and the download for the project file to use this in your own projects will be down below in the description on my patreon so if you're interested in that and want to support the channel please go check that out and until the next time and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page